welcome to Mrs. Patnell's Math Session 2 in our lessons of capacity and measurement. Now, um, we are going to start off today's lesson with number of the day. So if you've got your sheets there or your pieces of special paper that you've done to make it look like this, the number of the day is, oh, big numbers, Mrs. Patnell, 20 or 30. 20 or 30, okay? So that's your number of the days to explore today. We are going to sing the months of the year first and then we're going to do a spot of counting. Now I've got a busy table again today, lots of bottles and my big tray of water. So it's going to be tricky to see the hundred square when we count in ten. So it will be very handy to have yours here as well to help you out. Although we're so good at counting in tens at the moment, you might not even need it at all. So let's try our months of the year first of all. Are you ready? January, February, March and April, May, June, July and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Right, let's take that down, put that safely over here. And then we're going to do a spot of counting. We're going to count first of all in... Um, in ones to 60 we will do. So I think you can see 60 here, just poking out above Ted's head. We're gonna count in ones, so every number up to 60. We'll go high on the multiples of five, all the ones that end in a five, and low on all the ones that are multiples of 10 that end in a zero. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Excellent counting in ones, fantastic work. So we're gonna count in tens now, excuse me, Ted. Now, as I say, some of mine disappear behind my water tray here so use yours or use your knowledge now of counting in tens to help you and we're going to go to 200 so we're going to use the hundred square and go through the multiples of 10 again but when we've got past 100 we're just going to say 110 120 and so on until we get to 200 okay let's go 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200. Excellent counting indeed. Okay, so today's capacity lesson. I have five different um, containers here on the table. I think you can see okay, I've got the sun on the camera. So one here, two, three, four and five. Now look at these containers, okay? Look at how tall they are, their heights. Look at how wide they are, okay? So see how much room they're taking up on the table. How wide are they? Maybe they're wide at the bottom though and they go a little thin at the top. So maybe they're not keeping their big wide width all the way up. These are all the things you need to consider when you're thinking which one is the largest bottle, which one is going to hold the largest capacity of water. Because we're going to be using water again today to measure and uh, we're going to have a little, a little sort of story that I'm going to put to you, a little sort of problem to solve. So looking at these five containers, I'm going to say to you, Imagine that we are going on a picnic, okay? There's a few of us and we don't want to get thirsty. We're gonna be walking. So we want to take a bottle with us 
happen. Don't worry about what they were previously used for because they're not really going to take it on a holiday on a picnic with us. It's just a story. So don't choose bottles just because you think that's what they're likely to hold. Probably should have peeled the labels off here. Just pick them to do with how big they look, which one's going to hold the most, which one's got the biggest capacity. So we want to take a bottle with us that's going to hold quite a bit of water the most water out of all of these in fact so that we don't get thirsty on our travels so if you're looking at these bottles and you're thinking what's the difference between them what's different about them so what's different between these two thinking about things like height and the width of the bottle how wide it is what's different about them i mean have a little look at these bottles now and have a little chat to your adult in the room and you can pause the video if you want to have a little chat about each bottle and compare them to one another so you might say well I don't want to take this one because it seems much shorter than this one next to it and indeed this one okay so it's much shorter so I don't want to take it and although I'm not just going to think about how short it is I'm going to consider how wide it is this one isn't very wide either is it so you might be having a conversation like that with your adult so lots of good language about which one you think holds the most has the biggest capacity and can take the most water on our picnic okay now you can call out to the screen which two you would like to take on the, for us to try out let's say for us to explore experiment with to see which two hold the most to see if we've made the right decision so you could yell out which two you'd want me to test out now on the camera but obviously I can't quite hear you so I'm going to go with the two that I think you've probably picked. Now, I know that this one was our biggest one yesterday. It held the most out of the three we had yesterday. But now I'm looking at it now. It's quite short compared to this one. And it's quite short compared to this one. Now, it's quite wide. But then this one is very wide in this way. I'll show you the bottom of this one. It's not wide in a circle, though. So it's not massively wide, but it does seem a quite a bit wider than that bottle. So I'm going to guess that you probably said this one, and you probably said this one. So these are the two we're going to test now um, to see which one has the biggest capacity, can hold the most water. Let's put these two, these three rather, to one side. Now, if I wanted to test these, how could I go about doing it? How could I test these to see which one can hold the biggest capacity and hold the most water is the largest container? What could I do to know? So you might have said what we did yesterday, where we used a cup to measure exactly how much water these bottles can hold, okay? Now, a cup isn't a standard measurement. You wouldn't see that on a label in a supermarket, but that's what we're using today. It's a non-standard measurement, but it's very good. It's very easy to see how many are going in, and it's nice and easy for us to use that measurement here today. Um, and so we can do what we did yesterday. We can tip cups into each bottle and work out which one holds the most cups and will be the one we take on the picnic. Now remember, use the same cup with both bottle measurings, okay? Otherwise it won't be a fair test. I wouldn't want to use a huge mug to test this one out and a little one here. It wouldn't be fair, okay? I wouldn't get so many cups in there because they're big cups. Right then, so have a little predict before I do. Which one do you actually think will be the one that we take on our picnic? Which one is going to hold the most? Do you think it's this one? That's quite wide at the bottom but not quite as tall, but there really isn't much in there. Height is there. Or do you think it's this one? Hmm, this one is rounded with its width. It's like in a circular set shape. So which one do you think? Hmm, so hopefully you've had a little prediction there. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to use the funnel that I made yesterday to make sure that when I'm tipping my water from my teacup into my very small top of my bottle, it will be um, quite possible that the water will start running down the sides. And then I haven't really filled it up with that exact amount of cups. So for this, I'm going to use this as my funnel. And it fits just over the top of this one. And then I've got a wider hole there to pour my water in. But it will all run down to the, the smaller hole at the bottom and fit just in the bottle, hopefully, and not run around everywhere. This is what I'm hoping for anyway. So... I'm going to hold that carefully. I have to hold it really tight over the top so it starts moving off, the water will leak out and I won't truly be putting those cups in there. So count with me. Remember I have to fill the cup up to the top. I can't just put a half empty cup in there and count it as one. It wouldn't be fair. So it must always be up to the top in my cup. So I've got 
one. Well, I've spilled a little bit there, so really try and take your time. Two, I've got to go quite slow with this funnel. Two, just a little bit. Three. Four, up to the top, five, six, still going, seven, now there were seven in that orange bottle we had as our choice today, wasn't there, because remember that from yesterday, so this is definitely bigger than that, so that was a good choice to pick this one as one of our two, so that was eight, nine, Ten, we're getting closer to the top. Eleven, make sure I fill my cup up to the top. Twelve, oh, I'm still going. Thirteen, oh, I think it's going to take another one. Oh, will it go? Fourteen, will it all fit in? It's got a bit of foam at the top, but that's not the water, that's just the foam. So I would say fourteen in there. Don't want to... That's it. It's just foam that's in there. You can see because it's not running through. So 14 went in this bottle. Let's put the lid on so I don't lose my 14. 14. Right, let's write that on a post-it note because I'm likely to forget. 14. A 1. 1 lots of 10 and 4 1s. 14 in this bottle here. That is a lot. I think we were wise to pick that bottle. Okay, let's try the other bottle here. Now, if it holds more, will it be a, um, a bigger number of, um, of cups than 14 or a smaller number of cups if it holds more? It should be a bigger number of cups if it holds more. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to make sure I fill my cup up to the top to make it fair. One. Two. Three, four, five. I lost a little bit there. I need to take my time a bit more. Six, seven. Let's get a bit of water in there. Seven and eight. Nine. Oh, I'm still going, but it's nearly at the top. Will we fit a tenth in there? I think we just get in ten. So we fitted ten cups in this one. Ten cups there and fourteen. Let's put our ten on there so we don't forget. I'm getting jolly soggy here, as is my pen. So ten, one lot of ten and zero ones went into this one. Okay. So what can we tell about these two bottles? Which one <laughs> which one holds the most <laughs> well obviously that's all fallen out now but it did hold ten. I'm gonna leave them there actually I think you can probably see them okay on the camera. So which one holds the most water? Which one has is the largest bottle has the largest capacity. This one holds 14, this one holds 10. It should be this one. And how do we know it is this one that is the largest bottle? And that should be because 14 is a bigger number than 10. Okay, so that's how we know that's larger. So, another way of doing it, so not to find out the exact number of cups that fit in each bottle, but just to find out which one is the biggest bottle, which one has the largest capacity, then I could have done it this way. I could fill up this one just from a tap maybe, so I don't know how many cups are in it, I just want to check if it's a bigger bottle than this one. Then I could do this, I could start pouring it into this bottle here, and this will be a way of telling which one is the biggest. Now, this one in my hand, we know is the biggest, don't we? Because we have measured it in cups. But uh, if we didn't know that, then we would, as we get close to the top, we would see something that will happen 
in this bottle I'm pouring into that will tell us that this bottle is the biggest. Now do you know, can you call out to the screen what you think will happen when I'm pouring from the biggest bottle into the smaller bottle? What's going to happen as I reach the top here? What's going to happen, can you see? It's going to start pouring over the top. Can you see that? And if I keep going until this bottle's finished, it's still pouring over the top. Getting a bit soaked here. Because this bottle holds more than this one. So because it fits more cups in, it will fill up this bottle but still have more to go. So as I'm pouring, it will overflow over the smaller bottle. So that's another way of telling which bottle holds the most, which one has the biggest capacity. Equally, if I'd done it the other way round, so let's empty the bigger one. I've got my bigger one here. It's a bit slimy, so I'm going to use my funnel as well because it has a small top on it. So my bigger one I am now holding here and I'm going to pour from my smaller one, which is quite soapy. Now, let's see what happens now when I pour from the smaller one into the bigger one. Will it still overflow if I'm pouring from the smaller one here into the bigger one? Will it still overflow? What do you think? I'm pouring into the bigger bottle, the larger bottle. In it goes. And did it overflow? No, it didn't this time because this bottle is smaller. It holds less than this bottle here. So I could fit the whole of the water into here and still have room for a bit more. So I could tell from doing that that this bottle is smaller and that this here is the bottle that I really want to take on our picnic because it holds the most. So there's two very good ways there of seeing which bottle has the bigger capacity, which is the bigger bottle, okay? So, you may notice if you have a little explore on these bottles as well if you've got some at home that you're working with if you look on the back and you've still got the labels on like me you often find or you will probably find uh, amongst all the writing about different things it's telling you about it often has a measurement and very often it's in liters with an all funny looking all there more like a capital one or sometimes an uh, the letter m and an all m and all for milliliters okay and you often get that on the back of these kind of bottles so this one has 1.5 liters that means one and a half it's not quite two this one has it got yes this one says oh it actually says the word liter two liters on this one so it actually tells you so if you look at things in um, supermarkets you will see very often on uh, things that are holding liquids they will have a measurement in liters or milliliters so i think maybe as a little task for you this afternoon you could find three bottles measure exactly how many cups that they take okay and then you could use post-it notes or little cards and you could label those bottles yourself okay so imagine that you are printing up the labels in a factory and you are sticking those labels on yourself so it gives you a little reference to what everyday labels are like in shops and you can label your own bottles but with the measurement of cups okay so uh, it's been a soggy lesson here today but we've had good fun talking about capacity and I will see you again tomorrow for another lesson. Bye-bye. Actually.